going to continue with the Kilroy's Key 3 Modern War, or Modern Warfare. Now, what am I doing with Kilroy's Key 3? Well, I'll put a link to it in the description so you can figure that out. But basically, I'm taking the top three games of, from my collection. And in this series, that's new to me in 2022 uh, that uh, that I've either acquired and or acquired and played for the first time. I could have just played it for the first time in 2022. And taking the best of those games that, in this case, uh, cover modern warfare. Uh, this one is also arguably might kind of cross over into alt history or um, World War Three or potential World War Threes of sorts, uh, and as you'll see through the theme. So, what are what games are we talking about? Well. The first one is going to be Red Menace, World War III in 1959. Uh, I've got this compliments uh, from the publisher, from R. Brent Ward, and uh, appreciate that. Uh, and I'll put a link again to some of my unboxings or discussions of these games in the description as well. Uh, this is a solitaire game. And it basically hypothesizes World War III in 1959, and this is mainly a, a missile shoot. It's uh, bombers coming with, uh, with missiles or with warheads to bomb the United States, and then you're doing the same uh, for uh, Russia, and you're keeping track of it on charts. And we'll get to that when we get to the presentation. Again, I mean, when, as part of this series, I, I present my point of view or my POV, which is presentation, operation, and value, uh, which presentation, again, is just what it means. It's the components, it's the maps, it's the overall look of the game. Operation is the rules and gameplay and how it plays. And value is, you know, what's the value in its simulation or is it replayable or how fun is it? Uh, the next game I want to talk about is Flashpoint, South China Sea. Again, got this compliments of GMT. This is a Harold Buchanan game. Um, and this is more modern. This is dealing with a hypothetical future conflict in the South China Sea. And the last one is the newest of the three that I got in 2023. And again, got this compliments of DVG. This is Spruance Leader, the Cold War Fleet Combat Solitaire Strategy Game. That's a mouthful. Uh, compliments of DVG, and this is part of their Leader series, which is a very involved series uh, that is you know, focusing on uh, solo play, focusing on generally modern combat. A lot of the Leader series are, uh, there's, there's some in the tank, but there's also a lot of air leader type uh, series. Um, the first one that I ever played was Thunderbolt uh, Leader, and it was before it went to DVG. It was when Dan Verson was doing games for GMT. How about that? A lot of anachronisms here. So um, these are the three I want to uh, talk about that, that kind of made it to the top of my list for Modern Warfare in, uh, that, that I played new in 2022. Uh, let's get to the point of view. So first is the presentation. Well, let's talk about the maps a little bit first here, or the boards of sorts. There's not as much maps as they are uh, more boards, although Red Menace, the first one we're going to look at here, does have a map, and you've got a polar view of the world, mainly looking at the United States and Russia, and that's where uh, all the action is going to take place, is flying over the North Pole and trying to bomb and take out cities. There's different cities in these locations, and you're trying to take out the Russian cities. Um, and you know, if you want to go retro, it's got a black and white map as well. And it's kind of thin, but it's, it's usable uh, in this regard. I actually put this under plexiglass because you're also going to be needing these charts to play the game. Because uh, you're going to keep track of everything on these charts of uh, kind of holding bay uh, and, you know, marking off. You can mark stuff off on here as well. And they give you actually a dry erase uh, marker to use with this. But the uh, counters are uh, 
the, the, the counters actually took a little bit of cleaning. These were like laser cut. And so you had to uh, kind of, there was a little bit of soot on them. You had to like clean that off. But you've got the counters and you've got submarines and all kinds of, I mean, and the counters are good, thick quality after you clean them off. Um, but, uh, you know, decent components to this game. Uh, there's these charts, there's that map. The counters are nice. You also have these cards, which are kind of the AI for the um, for, for for the opponent or for the Soviets and, and where where they're planning on uh, attacking and the like. So, uh, and then you've got to turn phases on here to keep track of stuff. And as I said, you can mark on these or or use these as holding boxes for the counters. So there you have it, and they're they're dual sided as well, but. Um, those are the components for this game, you know, between the counters, the cards, and the maps, and these two charts. That's pretty much it. Um, the next one is Flashpoint South China Sea. This is the game board. It's uh, a kind of a, a theater-level look at the South China Sea. You've got some islands in here that uh, you need to try to control. This is all about control. Uh, of those different areas it's basically a card game uh you have these cubes to keep track of you know red and blue keeps track of either the red for the china or the blue for the united states and you're going to be keeping track of different things like in vietnam you keep track of economic and diplomatic but there's also uh the, the these uh, islands that you're trying to control as well um, and you'll have that for each of these boxes. You're playing these cards over time. This is very much a card-driven game, and they have multiple uses between the values, the events, or this uh, the symbols matching the symbols based on what's already been played. And you're going to be playing out uh, on this space. So the victory track is kind of a tug-of-war uh, that you're going to be trying to go to either side. If you get to 15, you get a, an automatic or instant victory there. Uh, but it, you know, it, it's it's playing cube is playing cards to play cubes to take control of things. And there's an interesting scoring mechanism. There's these scoring cards that are out there that you will uh, try to claim based on if you have the right criteria in these areas. Um, so uh, very much a, a more game than simulation. This is very much a two player experience, and it's, it plays solo as well that uh, it's more in the experience and the gaming of it than than trying to you know simulate what would really happen in this area. Uh, the same is true kind of for Red Menace. Red Menace is, is more of a solitaire experience. Uh, I mean, World War III didn't happen in 59 unless they, they covered that up. Uh, we, we missed it uh, along with the moon landing. But um, they... Uh, the, 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 those both those games really focus on a gameplay and 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 the enjoyment value. The third game here is Spruance Leader, and that is very much a, uh, a solitaire experience. Uh, this is made for solitaire. This is your display, uh, and this has a lot of cards as well. But this is more of a sequential or. Uh, you know, following uh, the order of play that will dictate what happens on the board. I mean, there's all kinds of cards that you have in the game uh, that have, like here's Red November. That's kind of a one of the uh, special um, scenarios that you play here. But there's going to be a detect uh, for, you know, ships, uh, for subs, and for, uh, well, this is for subs, for ships, and for um Air on on these cards usually to determine how you're detecting it. You you have your task force here. You're basically managing a task force. You'll put your counters here. Uh, your your uh, ships will also be represented by cards, and you also can have helicopters as well. Or if you get some of the expansions, you have aircraft carriers that have airplanes um, or jets. And then this is kind of your grid of where the enemies are going to be coming from. And there'll, there'll, there'll be counters out here that you have to detect and try to determine what the threat is. And then you'll do combat on here. Um, as I said, there's a lot in, of cards and a lot in this box. I mean, this is one of those ones where I, I really like it, but it doesn't get to the table enough because 
trying to pack all this back in the box it came from, and it came in a really thick box there, but trying to pack it all back in that box is a puzzle in and of itself. There's a game in just trying to put all this back in the box and trying to get the lid on it. Uh, there's just so much in here. Uh, a lot of what you, ha you have, not only do you have the uh, ships and the planes and the helicopters, but you have all their ordnance as well. You have, uh, and you get to pick what you're going to, how you're going to arm the different uh, ships and planes and helicopters. Um, and that will determine on the scenario or the mission that you undertake. And there's lots of scenarios and missions in here. Uh, there's a whole stack of them that, that they're buried in this box here. But you'll have these scenarios. You can determine whether you want to do a short campaign or long campaign. And you'll go over, uh, you'll go out to these uh, areas, you know, starting here and working your way out. And then the, the, it depends on your target. You'll draw a target card. These cards right here, these numbers represent different targets. And they have their own defenses or, or threats that will be on them. And then you'll pick one of those targets that you're going for. And then you have to go through these zones to get to that target. Um, and, and having encounters. And there's places on this board where you put those encounter cards and then uh, uh, reveal them. There's also charts that, that during the campaign you're going to use, you know, the task force and the activity. And this will get modified and it will affect gameplay as well. Uh, and as I said, these are one-sided because they'll be on the board here. So, and then you'll play this game, and then at the end, you'll see what your um, what your results are. You know, you based on how you got victory points. You get victory points for various things, but you know, in sinking enemies and and doing uh, the and, and meeting your target objectives and stuff like that. But then you'll evaluate yourself on how you did. Like in this one, if you did the long campaign and had seventeen or less victory points. It was dismal. You know, you want to get, you got to get a fair 40 plus to get great. So basically you're going up against a preset score there. Um, so as I said, there's a lot in this box. There's a ton of campaigns or missions or whatever we want to call it. There's a lot of ships in this box. Plus this, this has both, um, or I think there might be three different expansions. This has all the expansions that are available to date. Uh, so again, really makes it, I mean, just the base box, it was tough getting in here, but then trying to sh uh, shove all three expansions in here really took a lot. And uh, just to do this video, I was <laughs> dreading having to put this all back in the box. Anyway, so a lot in here, I can attest this is heavy. There's a lot of stuff in here. As you can see, some of the counters, you can see some of the ships and stuff that uh, go in there. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of stuff in this box here. Anyway. So that is Spruance Leader. So when we're talking about um, production value for these games, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to probably lean right off to, uh, well, I didn't even got my keys yet, right? Got to get my keys out. So for, for presentation, which is my first P of my point of view, I'm going to go with Spruance Leader. There's just so much content in there. And there's so much, uh, you know, with the counters and each, you know, individual ships and the cards that correspond with it. And the, there's counters for each ordinance. The the gameplay area is is very is functional and works and and, and keeps it out with, with how you're managing stuff. So I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Spruance Leader for the overall presentation. It, it's almost like an overwhelming presentation as much as it's the it's quality it's quantity over quality in some respects. Um, you know, the next one that I'm going to go for a uh, presentation, this is kind of tough because Flashpoint South China, Sea, South China Sea is very clean and crisp, uh, and, uh, is easy to ascertain. Red Menace is, uh, you know, not a mounted map. You know, the quality is not necessarily as high, but it does a very good job of representing what it's trying to do in that regard. Um, so this was really tough, but I'm going to go with uh, Flashpoint South China Sea with the two keys and uh, Red Menace. I'll give it a bigger, bigger key, but it gets one key for overall presentation. Next, we go to the, the rule set here. Uh, Red Menace uh, rule book is 18 pages. It's fine. Um, it's dual column. It, it lays it out what you're trying to do in the game well. Um, it's not it's not the, it's not a complicated game to get into, but the rules don't necessarily get it 
give give it uh, a leg up on how it presents it. It takes a little bit to getting into. Um, Spruance Leader is thick. I mean, there's other rule books that come with the, the different expansions. The rule book itself is 50 pages, but that has an example of play in there. Uh, it is dual column. There are there's red examples. There's color graphics. I mean, it's 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 a it's a good rule book in that regard. You know, I've I've had you know I've had my issues with DVG rule books in the past uh, as not being the most intuitive. Uh, everything is typically there, but finding it and getting to it and understanding it uh, sometimes is a challenge. Um, I. I, I I hesitate to give a lot of complaints about it because I feel like if I'm going to complain about something, I should have a better way to fix it. I haven't spent the time to try to figure out what is the better way to present these, but I still struggle with their rule books in general. Um, Flashpoint South China Sea, uh, they give you a lot of rule books. I mean, you've got the, the, the general, uh, you've got a playbook that tells you how to play. That's very good. You've got a two-player uh, rules, which are again for the two-player game, and you've got solo rules. And the nice thing about these rule books are that you don't have to read the two-player game to play the solo, and vice versa. So if you just want to play solo, all the rules that you need for solo are there. If you want to play two-player, all the rules are two-player there. And then there's a playbook to show you how to play. Uh, I found the rules very crisp and clean. This is again a, kind of an abstract and more of a game than a simulation, so you know the rules should, uh, you know, accordingly be clean, clear, and concise in that regard. So in in that respect, um, I'm going to go with the three keys to South China South China Sea. Yeah, it's hard, easy for you to say. For uh, for operation, you know, this is my second point of view is operation, which really gets into the gameplay and into the rules. I think the gameplay is pretty clean and cl crisp, and the rules uh, back that up. Uh, next, uh, I think I'm going to go to... Um, I'm going to go to Red Menace uh, next with the two keys, because uh, although the rules aren't the clearest, as they probably could be, once you get the sequence of play down, which for solitaire games, sequence of play is very, very important... It, 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 you can pick this up and can play it and understand it. And so I'm going to give it the two keys and I'm going to give Spruance Leader a one. You know, probably uh, uh, not not maybe the most fair to it. I mean, the rules books is is better than some of the other ones, but still was a little struggle for me to get to. But there's just so much there. The gameplay, um, it's not an overly complex game, but there is a lot going on in it. And so it it's it's just complex by the nature of all the things that you're trying to juggle and all the plates you're trying to spin here. So that's why it probably gets that. Uh, now let's go to uh, value. What's the value proposition for these games? Um, value can be, you know, what's a simulation value? How well does it sim the situation? If it's dealing with a specific battle, how well does it sim that battle? It also goes to playability, replayability, you know, ease of play, all those kind of things to me go and go to value. Am I going to be playing this um, into my into my advancing years, which I'm already advancing into those years? Um, you know, I'm, this one I'm going to start with the one key first. The one key is going to be Red Menace. Fine game. I'm not saying you can't replay this a lot. I, I've re I've played this a few times now. It's just that it you once you kind of get a feel for what this play is and how things go. Um, you kind of been there, done that. Uh, there's still a lot of replayability in there. The the AI is is random. You don't know exactly where it's going to go. You don't know how the, uh, sh the 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 different attacks are going to come into your zone and how you're going to have to defend that or or attacking them. So you know there is replayability here. I'm just saying between these three, it's it it falls into number three. And again, these are the top three. Uh, so. Getting getting to be number three on, on this list is is still pretty high high uh, honors in in my opinion. So and this is all my opinion. Um, so I'm going to give Red Menace the one. Uh, next I'm going to give the uh, I'm going to give the two key to and we're doing it like the Miss America right. Uh, runner up is 
I'm going to give that to Flashpoint. Uh, I played this a lot. This is easy to get to the table. This is easy to play. The, the thing that really shines for this for me is the solo play. Although I, I like the two-player version of this better. I like, I've played this with my son several times and the give and take and the back and forth is uh, is very enjoyable and uh, and easy to set up and easy to get to the table. But the solo play is also uh, engaging. Uh, it's not to me. It's not as engaging as the two player, but it's still engaging and easy. And it's not that hard a game to set up. That's one uh, kind of factor for me for a solo game. If it takes a lot of time to set up, it's just not going to get to the table as much. So so I'm going to give that the two key. Which you know I'm going to give three keys to Spruance Leader, which it kind of violates that last rule. This takes a while to set up. This game is not an easy, you know, set up and, and play. Uh, so you've, you've got to carve out some time and figure out what you, you know, that I'm to, you know, this week or this weekend, or for the next couple of days, I'm going to be playing me some Spruance Leader and then clear out the table and set this up again. Uh, once you pick out a mission and start go and have everything kind of laid out, then yeah, you can go to town on it, and it's really not that hard to, you know, keep advancing to each mission or to the next mission or or what have you. But um, you know, you've got to set up some time for that because you know, for me, unless you've got a better storage solution, just getting it in everything in and out of this box is going to. Uh, is going to take an effort, but uh, but I'm going to give it the three keys because there's so much play in this box. First of all, this as as these uh, in looking at these three games, this one probably has the highest sim value. This is simulating task force during the Cold War uh, and trying to represent the units, the ships, the planes, and the jets and the helicopters and what have you based on what their capabilities were at that time during the Cold War, and you're, you're doing hypothetical missions during the Cold War, this has got a higher sim value uh, than, than these two. Um, and, and, but it also, to me, has a higher replayability value. There's just a ton of content in this box. There's a lot of different missions. There's some historical missions in here. The Falklands are, are in here as well. Uh, and you're all taking it from the standpoint of a, of a task force leader uh, uh so a naval task force leader uh during the modern war cold war uh time period so um th th to me this kind of wins out for both va uh simulation value and for replayability value in that regard uh i've played this the most i've probably played this the second most and i played this the least most but yeah this is getting the value yeah this there's, there's just so much in there as i said once you get over the hurdle of of understanding how the game plays, and, and this one, this game gets better the more you play it. You, it starts becoming intuitive, and you understand that sequence of play, and you start getting that down. This is not one you play and then leave the mission up for a week or two weeks and then come back to it. You kind of want to knock several of these out in a row. This one you can pull out and play any time. This one is pretty much the same. Uh, but to me, this one's more of a mood one. i got to be in the mood for, for this kind of... Uh, this kind of, of game. This is more of a, a a bomb thrower. You know, just you're just chugging bombs, lobbing bombs back and forth to each other. So it's a little bit different feel than what you're going to get from this, which is has a little bit more political bent, and this one, which is very much more of a of a tactical naval uh, bent. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. That's what I come uh, came up with for my Kilroy's Key Three for Modern Warfare. Again, this uh, might also cross over into alt history you know have feel free to check that box off um and and could have been my naval too if i if i would have picked a naval uh, game there as well anyway that's what i have for you today love to know your point of view what do you what, what's your point of view on these three games or on games in your collection or games that you know you played in 2022 that fit in the modern war or alt history space Love to know what you think on that uh, or what you agree or, or disagree with my thoughts on these three. It's all fair game. It's all good. Hey, we're all in this together. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Greatly appreciated. Uh, be well, be safe, and have a happy holiday season. Before I go, I forgot to count the keys. So let's go through and look and see what we have here. Red Menace has one, two, three, four keys. Flashpoint 
South China Sea has one, two, three, four, five, six keys. And Spruance Leader has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven keys. Spruance Leader wins the day, is the top of the three key pyramid uh, in this in this regards for modern, uh, new to me in 2022, or you can call it alt history because uh, this is hypothetical. Uh, new to me in 2022, almost got away without doing that. So I was actually getting a call on my phone from Dan from No Enemies Here that distracted me. So had to go talk to Dan. He's been under the weather. I want to make sure he's doing fine. And I want to make sure all of you are doing fine as well. So take care. And there you have it. You can't go wrong with any one of these three, but this one won the day. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.